Well, hey, I need a little audience participation because, I mean, it's been a long day for me. And, I mean, I, you know, caffeine's starting to wear off a little bit. So y'all got to help me out a little bit here with some audience participation. So let me ask you guys this. How many of you have ever been on a mission trip? Raise your hand if you've ever been on a mission trip. Maybe it's here at Christ Fellowship. Maybe it's at another church. Maybe it's something you did with your family. Man, thank you. Some of you guys have. A lot of you guys haven't. We're going to be talking about in coming days, weeks, months, years, whatever, some ways that you can get involved in mission stuff. But man, when I was y'all's age, when I was in high school in particular, I loved getting to do mission trips. In fact, I did mission trips, I think, every single year I was in high school. I I got to go to Mexico a couple times, got to go to Belize a couple times, and because I grew up in Houston, we we went to Mission Arlington a few times, did some crazy trips. In fact, I even think we have some pictures uh, from some of my mission trips when I was you guys' age, so that would have been at Mission Arlington. That was me, 11th grade Cody, right there, so right there. And then, you know, we're in Mexico because we didn't have shovels, so we're digging or filling in a ditch with wood slabs because that was the most efficient way of doing that. I met Justin Bieber in Belize, if you can believe that. Met Justin Bieber in Belize. We had to take a picture with him and uh, yeah, got to do uh, got to do some incredible mission work there in Belize and um, have a few more. Got to cr- climb some Mayan ruins while we were there. That was a really unique experience. And then unsurprisingly, I got an opportunity to teach. So I know that probably just shocks you guys that I would be up there teaching even as a 12th grader. Um, But man, I I just loved getting to go on mission trips and just absolutely look forward to every single opportunity that I got as a student to do mission trips. And and so when I heard that, you know, we're going to start a new series on missions, man, you know, my mind just kind of raced back to these trips that I took. Like, oh yeah, like, man, I remember hopping on that plane and remember that flight, you know, from Houston down to Belize and, and the janky bus we had to get on from Belize to, to where we were going. And I think about, oh, you know, taking that bus ride down to the border with Mexico. And, and my mind just always goes to like going out somewhere, you know, going to a new culture, a new place. And, and I don't think that's unique to me. I think when a lot of us hear the word missions, we think about like, oh yeah, like, you know, I saw that documentary about those guys that were like canoeing down the Amazon River and they were like going to go talk to these unreached tribes in the Amazon. Or or maybe some of you guys, you know, that, that have been in service here at Christ Fellowship, you heard about Rafe and some of the team that went to the Czech Republic and they got on planes and they flew. Or maybe even some of you guys, especially high schoolers, you have friends that are like planning to go to India for a year after they graduate and be a missionary or something. And, and a lot of us, Whenever we think of missions, we always just think about this like going out, going to some crazy new culture, having some new experience. But tonight, I, I want to make this very clear. Those are good things. Those are things that we should be doing. But when we're talking about living on mission, we're not just talking about going overseas. See, did you ever stop to think that you could be a missionary to your own school? Do you ever stop to think that, that maybe you can represent Jesus and tell people about him without ever getting on a plane? And tonight, we're going to be kicking off this new series called On Mission. And Jake and I, over the next few weeks, are going to be talking about what it looks like to, to support and to be active in missions. But tonight, I'm going to make the case that before you start looking to all the different corners of the world that you should first look to reach the people that are sitting right across the lunch table from you. And tonight, we're going to answer the question, what does it look like to live on mission right here in McKinney, Texas? What does it look like to live on mission right here in McKinney, Texas? And in specific, we're going to answer that question by answering three smaller questions. And so we're going to start with this first one, what? It's important for us to pause and ask, what has Jesus actually asked us to do? What has Jesus actually asked us to do? Have you guys ever had one of those moments 
where you thought you knew what you're supposed to be doing and you just started doing it really diligently, but you didn't actually know what you were supposed to be doing. Anyone know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that was like me all throughout school, but I have one story in particular that I can share with you. I was in sixth grade, final exams, and it was in English class, which mind you, I was a good English student. I will proudly stand up here and say this. I was a good English student, always did well in English, but you guys know what I'm talking about. In English, you know how you have like the final exam and it's essay questions? And you have to like respond to a prompt or something like that. And you have to write out an essay question. Well, the prompt for me as a sixth grade English student was something like, I don't know, like who is one person that's made the biggest impact on your life? Easy enough question, right? Well, because I was stressed, I mean, sixth grade, first time taking finals. And you know, like you're feeling the time crunch, you're looking at the clock. And because I was a sixth grade boy, so attention span was, you know, no offense to you guys over here. But for me, that simple question, you know, who is someone that has made an impact on your life? I don't know how. I don't know why. I don't know where it came from. But I thought the question was, what is one moment that has made a big impact in your life? Now, mind you, those questions are very similar But when you start writing out your answers, those answers diverge very quickly. So I wrote out the greatest essay of all time that actually had nothing to do with the original prompt. So I noticed whenever I turned it in, you know, just very proudly being like, oh, goodness, look at me, wrote out this amazing essay. My teacher kind of just starts looking at me, you know, as she's like looking at the, the answer. I'm just like, hmm. She's not reacting the way I thought she would. And then, you know, she kind of told me, she's like, did you understand the prompt just fine? And I was like, eh, you know, like I thought I did and, you know, don't think I do now. And she's like, well, you clearly didn't answer the correct question. And so fortunately, we were able to work it out. It was still good because ultimately she didn't care about the answer so much as she did my grammar syntax, all those other fun things that you guys are dealing with now. But... The question or or, or the point remains, I spent all that time answering a question that was actually not asked of me. And so to this day, I still feel silly for not paying attention to what was being asked of me. And so what I tell you here tonight is not just a simple story of days gone by. I tell you that because I would hate for that to be true of us. That as we talk about living on missions, that that we start doing a bunch of stuff without first understanding what Jesus actually asked us to do. So we're going to take a look at that right here. Matthew 28, verse 18 through 20. Then Jesus came to them, the disciples, and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded of you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Now, there's a lot happening in this passage of scripture. And I mean, this in and of itself could be the entire sermon. And I know that that we'll be coming back to this verse uh, all throughout our series that we have. But in particular, I want us to take a look at three different parts. See, first of all, Jesus tells us in answer to that what, that we are to make disciples. We are to make disciples. Now, what does it mean to make disciples? That's one of those things that you throw around in church and that you've probably heard before, but like you probably don't actually really understand what that means. So I got you guys. We're going to make it easy, break it down. Literally what what making disciples means, what Jesus is trying to communicate is he's saying that, that you are to build relationships and build bridges with people with the desire and with the hope that they will experience Christ through you. So that as you live your life, as you let other people come into your life, that you build intentional relationships with them with the hope that they will experience Christ through you. So that's, that's kind of in a nutshell what we're saying when we say make disciples. So that's the first thing. Secondly, Jesus tells us to baptize. Now, certainly Jesus is referring to the literal baptisms, like what we do here at Christ Fellowship, you know, where where people go down in the water and then they come back up. 
But Jesus isn't telling us that we need to just go around dunking people, all right? We're, there's a lot more to what he's saying than that. Specifically, what Jesus is saying is that we need to baptize in the sense of what that baptism stands for, what that baptism represents. That, that as you've seen us do here at Christ Fellowship, when we baptize someone, we say that your old way of life has been buried. So the life that you had before Christ, that that is dead. And then now you raise up to new life in Christ and, and that you walk in that newness. And, and so what Jesus is telling us to do is that we're to build relationships with others and, and that as they hopefully come to experience Christ through us, that one day they would also come to experience that new life in Christ. And so third and finally, Jesus tells us to teach. And simply what Jesus is saying is that we should continue to walk with those who have experienced this new life in Christ and that we should teach them to do the things that we know to do. And so if you go back to what Jesus said, he said, you know, hey, teach every, teach these people to obey everything that I've commanded of you. So as you guys are here tonight and as you're in this room and as a lot of y'all have grown up in church, all these things that y'all have learned, all these verses, all these stories, man, all these things that, that you know to be truth, man, teach that to other people. So it's a natural progression. What Jesus has called us to do is that we are to build relationships with others with the hope that they will experience Christ through us and then ultimately experience life change through Christ and then also through us and then through others that they would then begin to grow in that faith to one day get to the place where they can do for someone else what you did for them. So that's the what. That is what Jesus has asked us to do. And now let's get to our second question of the night. Where? Now, now that we know that, that we are doing what we're supposed to be doing, where are we supposed to go do it? And, and let me ask you, man, you know, we, or let me answer that question for you. We can do it anywhere, man. We can, we can live for God. We can do what he's asked us to do anywhere. But tonight in particular, as I mentioned before, my hope is that you will start the journey of living on mission exactly where God has placed you. Because you know, at the end of the day, every journey starts somewhere. Because I would hate for us to forget that while there are tons of people all over the world, like I was talking about, that we need to reach for the gospel, that we do need to share Christ with, but that we get so focused on the people way far away from us that we forget about the people that are right here, right? Right? So it's a both and, and and we're going to be talking about going out here in a few weeks. But tonight, I want us to focus on the people right here. Because guys, as I mentioned before, there are people in your neighborhoods. There are people in your schools. There are people on your sports teams. There are people all over McKinney and Prosper and Frisco and wherever you call home. There are people all over that need to experience Christ through us. And so Jesus actually provides an example of that. This isn't me just making this up and saying, oh, you should just start here because that'll be easy. Man, Jesus actually gives us a little precedent for that. Matthew 10, beginning in verse 5, these 12, the disciples, Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any towns of the Samaritans. Rather, go to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you've received, freely give. Now let me break down for you real quick what's happening because there's a lot that's very important to what we're talking about tonight. See guys, this is the very first time that Jesus sent his disciples to go out and share the gospel and minister to others. But it's very important that I want you to notice where he sent them. He sent them to the lost sheep of Israel. All right, now we're going to put our thanking caps on. Are y'all ready for this? Do you know where this story took place? It was in Israel. Good job, guys. Y'all are so smart. So Jesus sent the disciples out to the lost sheep of Israel. 
as they lived in Israel. So were they getting on boats and getting on planes and going anywhere crazy? Was he sending them to Yugoslavia? That's not a country anymore. Shh, kill me, Sid. So Jesus had them start out by ministering to their own communities. They didn't go somewhere crazy initially. They did later, but they started right where they were. And they all went to different towns, different places. They all had different connections, different communities. But the disciples were instructed by Jesus to start sharing the good news of Christ right where they were. Now, does that mean that Jesus didn't care about the Gentiles, that he didn't care about the Samaritans, all those other people that he mentioned? Absolutely not. Absolutely not, right? Jesus loved everyone, and and God's plan is that everyone would come hear the gospel one day, right? But in a nutshell, what Jesus is saying is that we're going to change the world. The gospel is going to change the world. But why don't we start right here? And guys, I can't help but wonder, what would our community look like if we had that same mentality? We're going to change the world, but we're going to start right here. And with that, I just can't help but wonder, what would be different about the way that you lived if you saw yourself as a missionary to your community? What, what would be different about the way that you lived if you saw yourself as living on mission here in McKinney, Texas, or in Prosper, or in Frisco, or wherever? Because I'll just be honest with you guys, when I was y'all's age, even though I grew up in church, even though I went on all the mission trips, I really didn't see myself as a missionary to my community. Maybe not until I was in 11th or 12th grade. And as I think back, man, I just can't help but remember all the opportunities that I missed to share a word of truth to a friend who was battling lies. Or to remind a classmate who was struggling with loneliness that they were known and loved by me and by God. Or or I think back to the opportunities that I missed to tell a neighbor who is dealing with a hopeless situation about the unshakable hope of Jesus Christ. And guys, I just can't help but wonder how my eye and the world around me have been different if I saw myself as a missionary to my community before I was like 18 years old? I don't know. See, guys, here at Christ Fellowship, we have what we call our vision. And basically what it is is a mission statement or like it's our, it's our about us, if you will. And in specific, what, what our vision here at Christ Fellowship is that we believe God has given us a mission as a church and as a student ministry to reduce loneliness, to reduce anxiety, and to reduce addiction through having meaningful conversations so that others might experience Christ through us. So let me just ask you guys, is there any loneliness in your schools? Is there any anxiety on your teams? Is there any addiction in your neighborhood? And see, guys, what I want you to know as we bring it back together here is that you can be a part of the solution by allowing others to experience Christ through you. Which leads us to our final question that we're going to address. How? How do we live on mission in our community? How do others experience Christ through us? Because when you think about it, man, that that whole idea of other people experiencing Christ through us, that can be kind of intimidating, right? That doesn't sound like a normal thing for us to do. But man, I I have one last verse that I just want to share with you guys that, that I hope answers that question for you. It's from Acts 1.8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. Did you notice where that power comes from? Spoiler alert, it doesn't come from you. It comes from the Holy Spirit. It comes from God. And so all of us who have received Christ and have begun to walk in the newness of life that he brings that we talked about earlier and that that have experienced that life change, 
Well, now we have this power to be Christ witnesses in our community. And, and not just in our community, as we'll talk about here next week, all the way to the ends of the earth. Because it's not our own strength, it's not our own wisdom, it's not our own power, it's God's power that enables us to go and do things that are eternally more significant than we could ever do on our own. And so the question then becomes not if he can do it, but rather if you'll let him do it through you. In fact, guys, I I even have a personal story that I can share about this, about what it looks like to, to be a missionary to your own community and to allow God and the urging of the Holy Spirit to just speak through you. Man, this is a couple months ago. As you guys know, um, outside of being a pastor here at Christ Fellowship, I'm also a trainer for Camp Gladiator. So if you guys think I'm intense here, just see when I'm leading people in exercise. So I, I was doing a personal trainer thing, had a full class, all that. Um, and, and it's no secret, you know, I'm not like necessarily super open about it, but it usually comes out every class that, that I'm actually a pastor. That's my real job. And so as I've gotten to train different classes, different people, you know, I've gotten to build relationships with others. Well, there was this guy that walked up to me after one of the classes. Um, this is an older dude and he came up to me and he's like, Hey, um, Man, just wanted to let you know, he's like, uh, I have a surgery that's coming up here in a few days. And he's telling me a little bit about it. And basically, they, they found something that, that they thought could be cancer. And they were like, hey, we need to like get on this right now. And so this dude's world is just kind of like spinning, basically. And he's got this surgery coming up. And he knew that I was a pastor. And so I don't know where this guy is on his faith journey. You know, it's not like we sat down and like had a Bible study or anything like that. I don't even know if this guy's a Christian. But in that moment, he's like, hey, um, can you pray for me on Wednesday? And I'll be honest with you guys. My initial reaction and temptation was like, oh, you know, since there's other people around and since I'm not like in pastor mode, I'm in personal trainer mode, you know, it's kind of like, oh, like I could just tell him like, yeah, absolutely, I'll pray for you. And then we had just kind of go our different ways. But in that moment, I'll just be honest, I very strongly, very clearly felt the Lord telling me, you just need to pray for this guy right now. And at first, you know, even though I like clearly have no trouble being weird and goofing off in front of people and doing weird things and all that, you know, I'm like, oh, but that just, that feels weird. Just praying, you know, just two dudes right here, you know, we just finished up with, with exercising. I mean, yeah, it just kind of feels a little weird, but I just very clearly felt strongly God saying, Hey, I want you to pray for this guy right now. Don't push it off. Pray for this guy right now. And so we prayed and, and I just asked this guy, I was like, Hey, is it, is it cool if I just pray for you right now? And the guy, he's kind of a little surprised. He's like, yeah, absolutely. And so we prayed and and man, you know, I wish I could tell you some like crazy story about like, oh, you know, like fire came down from heaven and he got on his knees and repented and turned to Jesus right then and there. I, no, nothing like that happened. You know what did happen? He walked away knowing that I loved him and I cared about him enough to listen to him, to pray for him, and to have that special moment and that connection with him. And let me tell you, ever since that day, ever since I've seen this guy, our relationship is now so much deeper than it was. It's not just, hey, how's life? Cool, great, see you tomorrow. We actually have a real friendship now. And so now I have an inroad with him and I'm able to have an influence on him and in his life that I wasn't before that moment. And so I don't know how God's going to use that, but that's just a real world experience that I had about, hey, I need to be present right where I am. And here's someone who's hurting that needs to experience Christ's love. So I'm going to be obedient and show them Christ's love. That's all it is. It's all it is. It's being obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit whenever he gives you an opportunity to allow others to experience Christ through you. And guys, as we're talking about living on mission in our community, I would just argue it's as simple as that, that we follow the Holy Spirit's tug for us to have meaningful conversations, meaningful interactions with someone else acting as Christ's witness, not in our own power, not in our own ability, 
but through God and his ability. And so as you guys go to small groups tonight, I just want to pass along that simple question that I asked earlier. Man, what would be different about your life? What would be different about your schools? What would be different about your sports team if you saw yourself as a missionary to your community? So you guys will talk about that a little bit more here in small groups. But before I let you guys go, man, let me just pray over you guys and y'all will be dismissed. Father, we love you so much, and we want to give thanks for this evening. And God, we know that you have an incredible plan and a purpose for each and every one of the people that are represented here in this room tonight. And so my prayer over them is that as they go to small groups, God, that you would bless their conversations and that they would experience Christ through their leaders and through each other. And God, that in turn, that the world that you have given them, that you've placed around them, that they would experience Christ through them. God, we love you and we thank you for giving us the the ability and the opportunity to be your witnesses both here in McKinney and to the far corners of the world. We love you and give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.